Hello. Welcome. It was 31st December and as the ritual was. I pulled my sheet and scribbled down my resolutions for the new year. I simply scribbled, no more sexual immorality. I stared at what I had written for a few minutes. This was the nth time I was writing this same resolution. The longest I had won that battle lasted 18 days into January. I had a sudden urge to be in church. I wanted to be in the house of the Lord as the new year burst open. I prayed as I waited, asking God to strengthen my resolve. The clock chimed announcing the new year. And there was the usual excited chorus among the congregation. That was when I felt a tap on my shoulder. There, sitting right behind me was a lady I knew from the university. Let me say, this was a lady I had tried to date. And now here we are, both single, and unaccompanied. For some reason that I still cannot fathom. We drove over to my crib. The last thing I remember was looking at the resolution that I had written less than four hours earlier lying on the table. And I failed again. Why did I do it? I honestly don't know. I bet this is the struggle that many listeners can relate to. And I want to share how I was able to break this cyclical chain of sin, resolve, sin again, resolve again. Before I continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. When Jesus was about to leave he told his disciples. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. John 15 verses 14 and 15. Abide in me. That is a phrase we have heard over and over again. But how does abiding in him help me to overcome this challenge that I face? First, I needed to know exactly what abide in me means. Because, unless I fully appreciate what it means to abide in Christ, I was never going to overcome this challenge or any other challenge in my life. And I did have a lot of immoral challenges including pornography and masturbation. To abide simply means to remain in the same place for a period of time. It means to make one's self at home in a place. In fact when the Apostle John commands us to abide in Jesus in 1 John 2 verse 28. Now, little children, abide in him, so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. He was commanding us to make abiding in Jesus our lifestyle. One of continuing intimate fellowship. And this we can only do when we depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. That is why Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So writing New Year resolutions without allowing the Holy Spirit to help you abide in Christ, would amount to nothing. That is why we fail again and again. Second, to abide in Christ. Means I am to live today as if Christ is coming back today. Jesus wants me to go on with my family life, career, and my hobbies. But he wants me to enjoy all these whilst I anticipate heaven. As I read through the New Testament I come across several verses that talk of Jesus' return. I believe the Holy Spirit wants us to absorb that truth. Because grasping that truth transforms your walk. If you are looking for him to return today, you will be more likely to be living in him, abiding in him. Third, abiding in Christ means I have to stop being a spiritual vagrant. Bible says in Genesis 5:24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I had not made any commitment to walk with God. 
I had not set for myself specific goals which I constantly strive to attain. I was simply a vagrant with no such purpose. There was no crown I was aspiring to receive one day. All along, in my relationship with God. I just wanted to be assured that God loved me. Whilst I enjoyed my love-hate relationship with sin. I knew porn and masturbation were wrong. I knew that extramarital sex was wrong. But I loved what they provided. I cherished that short-lived moment of escape. I found myself running back any time I longed for pleasure. I was utterly aimless in my spiritual life. So I needed to set a goal for myself. My goal was, to glorify God, and to enjoy Him forever. Once I settled on my goal, Hebrews 11 verse 1 took on an entirely new meaning for me. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For this reason, I sought to please the Lord to worship Him in an acceptable manner. By walking in fellowship like Enoch. I was no longer going to walk through life without a purpose or a goal. Neither should you. Fourth, abiding in Christ means not only am I in Christ, but Christ ought to be in me. In John 14 verse 23 Jesus says. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Therefore, to abide in Jesus is not a static relationship, but an ever-deepening, joyful, vital personal fellowship with Him. It means to be at home with Christ, comfortable with Him, enjoying an unbroken fellowship, being open, honest and transparent. Abiding means I confess our sins quickly and seek repentance earnestly, because I am always eager to return to our first love. How can I, after seeing what awaits me in His kingdom, be satisfied in standing by the door? When I have been invited in by Jesus to dwell in the King's presence and share in His glory. Fifth, abiding means to utterly depend on Jesus for our every need. You see, our relationship with Christ is fixed, we are children of God the moment we believe in Jesus. But our fellowship depends upon whether we abide in Him as we ought. We feed off Him, and draw from Him, just as the branch does the vine. This abiding means obedience. That is why John says in 1 John 2 verse 6. He that saith he abides in Him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. And our first obedience is to abide in Him. Such obedience is observed in holy living. And so John goes on to say in 1 John chapter 3 verse 6 that Whosoever abides in him sins not. This is not sinless perfection, though that should be our goal. But it is living above willful and habitual sin. And we do not willfully sin because we know that the Holy Spirit is witnessing our abiding in Christ. And hereby we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit which he hath given us, 1 John 3:24. We also know that abiding in Him is the condition of answered prayer. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you, John 15:7. Finally, abiding in Christ is manifested in fruitfulness. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit, John 15:5. So I stop worrying about results, about my good deeds, my behavior. And concentrated my interest, on abiding in Him. And fruit bearing simply became a natural consequence of abiding. How did I concentrate my interest in abiding in Christ? I did so by cutting out the non-essentials in my life. The process was painful, but it was for my own good. As we yield more and more to God, He cuts off and severs the extraneous twigs and branches in our lives that make us fruitless. What is your highest ambition? Are you truly seeking to glorify God and do His will, or are you a spiritual vagrant? 
When you pass from this earthly scene may it be said of you as it was of Enoch, he walked with God. God bless you.